Well, eight public high schools in South Australia will be among the first in the country to trial an artificial intelligence app. To talk more on this, South Australian Education Minister Blair Boyer joins me now. Thanks for your time. Thanks for um, having me. You're leaning into the technology, which has got a lot of headlines and I guess some concerning ones. So talk us through why you decided to do this. Yeah, listen, we've got a pretty simple philosophy on it, really, I guess. It's not as though we suggest that there aren't pitfalls with AI. We know that there are, um, but it's akin to other things, I think, that, that, you know, could pose problems for the people using them. Do we stick our heads in the sand and pretend that they're going to go away? Uh, or do we actually make the effort to teach the young people in our education system how to actually use it safely? And that's what we're doing with AI and the trial at eight public schools, which runs for eight weeks. We've co-designed our own sort of version of chat GPT, if you like, with Microsoft, which has a lot more uh, safety features built in. So there's content filters and making sure the data is locked down so uh, the personal data of the students using it can't escape out into the ecosystem, uh, but actually teaching them what the downsides of AI, AI are, but also what the potential upsides are as well. So, um, look, people are always game something if you bring it in. What about cheating as a result of it? How would that be tackled, whether it be an essay or maths or whatever it might be. Yeah, and that's the debate I can remember myself from high school in the 90s with the internet and Wikipedia. I remember at the time people spoke about it as though it was going to be the end of education as we knew it and, and did it pose uh, problems at the time? Did we need to adapt? We did. Did some students try to use it to cheat? They did. But we've got to remember that our teachers are actually mm -hmm. experts at knowing their students. And if you all of a sudden have a piece of work which is handed in, which is unlike anything else that you've handed in for the rest of the year, teachers, and they'll tell you this, are really good at picking it up. And um, if the topic is the same for all the students in the class and they, they're going to use uh, EdChat, which is our version of chat GPT, it's going to generate basically the same answers for these kids anyway. And it's going to be fairly obvious, I think, um, that the work is not their own. So they won't be able to submit it. It's not about that. It's not about giving kids the opportunity to use AI to do the work for them. Mm. This is about actually teaching kids to use it safely. I, I, I liken it to learning to drive. Is driving dangerous? Yes. Does that mean we shouldn't teach people how to do it safely? No, because you're going to need to drive and in the future you're going to need to know how to use AI. So is it a case that sort of classes are small enough where teachers do know students? I imagine if you get to university and there's a few hundred there, sometimes the teacher's never met the person in the back row, but at high school you're confident. An old-fashioned, nah, this doesn't sound like uh, young Tim's essay here, is uh, it's going to be pretty easy to uncover. It's exactly how it'll work, and I remember very well my dad was a high school English <laughs> teacher, and I remember very well... Uh, you know, Dad marking essays and finding some that had clearly been taken straight from Wikipedia and it was obvious straight away. Uh, so we're not, you know, suggesting that that's going to be OK. Uh, we're not giving kids the opportunity just to essentially download slabs of information from um, uh, the bot or the, the, the artificial intelligence and then submit it as their own work, but it is about showing them how to use it safely and, importantly, teaching them the things that AI can get wrong because it does get things wrong. Yeah, I'm sort of thinking of my high school. I won't go into details, but I didn't realise they could create the, or, or um, locate the source of a particular document I put in. And that oh dear. I didn't try that again. Um, Trap for young players. If you, I guess you also rely on good teachers. Is this the biggest future crisis or even now crisis facing education, at attracting good teachers? And is it, how much comes back to pay? Because you've had a meeting of your colleagues today, right. state and territory and federal. Is that sort of the number one issue right now? Teacher workforce shortages are the number one issue and we're discussing it with the Federal Minister, Jason Clare, right now. I've just popped out of the meeting. So, yes, it is number one. Um, but I would say that my observation is where it is different at the moment, the, de the debates we're having in different jurisdictions in terms of enterprise bargaining, pay is still an issue, but workload is now, I think, number one. Now, I don't remember a time where that's been the case. So, you know, of course, teachers are seeking to be... Um, uh, have an increase in their pay, and, and that's something that we will all consider. Um, but the workload issues, I think, are number one now, and they're what, seeking a what's reduction. What's changed there? What, why are teachers yeah. doing more than they used to? Are they doing more than they used to? I think classrooms are more complex places. And uh, the, the anecdote I always tell is my own dad, who taught between 1972 and 2012, uh, and he spoke about what it was like in 1972, and he said he spent all his time teaching, and he felt that by 2012, when he retired, he spent much more of his time um, uh, managing behaviour and other right. difficulties in the classroom. And that is the feedback I get from every teacher I speak to, is that the classroom is a different place, not only that it was in 72 when my dad started teaching, but it was, it's vastly different to 1999 when I finished high school. Yeah, so managing, I guess it's partly behavioural issues, but also clashes of personalities, sorting them out. Um, 
monitoring student welfare, all of the above. Student wellbeing so, is a big one, but that's in poorer shape than it was where you and I would have gone to school. It's just the more truth. awareness of it. Yes, more well. awareness of it, and yeah. that's tough for teachers. So, the, 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 you know, and, and the stuff we're talking about right now, right? AI, uh, vaping, social media, mobile phones, none of those things were there 20 years ago, basically. Yeah. And well, that's all the teacher's job too. I remember computers came in uh, our school in about year nine or year 10, and we all figured out the internet and our productivity went down there until they took away the yellow cords. Do you need to be wary of that with AI too, that it's sort of this fun thing, but people get carried away with it? And you do. With all technology, I think it's true. You know, I'm not certainly someone who's out here saying we have to embrace technology completely. I mean, we've done a full mobile phone ban in high schools in South Australia. Phone is off from the, from the start of the day to the end of the day. So I'm certainly not one of these people who just says, you know, open slather, it, yeah. but you've got to teach people how to use it safely. If we send people out of the South Australian education system in the next 10 years and they've got no idea about how to use AI, that is a fail mark for us as a system. Yeah, well, they used to take away our Walkman, so fair enough that they're not allowed a phone. I'm showing my age. I, had, I? I had a Walkman. I had a mini display. The, the, the I was headphone the other day. coming up the sleeve. Oh, wow, a, that's a good very one. Cool, um, cooler than me. Just finally, the uni merger yes. um, between the two big unis in South Australia. Mm. Opposition of the Greens want an inquiry. Yes. You don't have the numbers in the upper house. Is that going to happen? You're comfortable with that happening? Uh, listen, uh, we've got to see what happens in the upper house. In fact, Parliament is sitting in South Australia today. I've managed to escape to be here for the um, Education Minister's meeting. But listen, I think shouldn't lose sight of the fact that what has been achieved so far in getting agreement between those two universities is a significant thing. It's significant for South Australia. If we can get it done, it's going to mean um, big things in terms of, you know, who we can attract to the university, both in terms of students and staff, and we want to have a university that is always in that top 100, maybe top 50. And if you're comfortable with that and they've gone through those details, then if an inquiry has to happen because of the upper house, so be it, just get it done quickly? Would that be your call? Well, the comments I think that the Premier and Deputy Premier both made is that if that is going to happen, let's make sure it doesn't hold up what can be a really incredible result and you know, something that has been long talked about in South Australia. We might actually be on the verge of making it a reality. Minister, thanks for your time. Thank you for having me.